20 minutes of Halo facts that are totally true. It's gonna be a wild one, so strap on in. Ready, set, go. While the Halo TV show is not quite considered canon, it is based off of the video game franchise and generally stays very close to the core canon. But did you know that the character McKee is actually inspired by the character Halfjaw from Halo 2? Not only are the plot points very similar, but also if you look at these two characters side by side, you can actually see the similarities. Now you might know that before the Arbiter was called Arbiter, he was called the Dervish and because of concerns, Microsoft made Bungie change the name to Arbiter, right? But did you know before Dervish or before the Arbiter, there was another name that Bungie heavily considered and that name was Larry. Back in the main canon, after the events of Halo 4, we've actually learned that Master Chief officially, as far as the lore is concerned, has an astigmatism, which is a defect in the eye or in a lens caused by a deviation from spherical curvature, which results in distorted images as light rays are prevented from meeting at a common focus. Huh, the more you know. Also, after the of Halo 4, Master Chief now has deuteranopia, also known as deuteranoptic colorblindness, which essentially means he has a red and green color deficiency, making images like this harder to read. This isn't all that rare though, it actually affects about 1 in 12 men, or 1 out of 200 women. If you've ever seen The Office, you might know that there's many recreations of The Office. There is a Polish version, there's an Indian version, and there's a German version. But did you also know that the Halo TV show has a German version as well. This version of the Halo TV show was released all the way back in 2013, shortly after Halo 4's launch and was supposed to tie in with the atmosphere and the feeling of Halo 4. I actually think this doesn't look bad and I remember watching it when I was younger and you know it was really cool seeing Master Chief clubbing and you know partying and just being a human and finally after all these years, we saw him without a helmet. And the biggest thing is that this series is not canon as well, technically, because Master Chief is called Michael in this. Over in Japan, years earlier, a live action Halo television series was greenlit and aired for one season. In this version of the show, Master Chief looks like this, Cortana looks like this, Master Chief likes to race cars, and also he can occasionally become giant, which is kind of cool. And man, it really feels like we got shortchanged when it comes to the Halo television series. Now back in the day, you know, there were some wild marketing products. There was the Halo 2 condom, but did you know they released a Halo 3 chastity belt to keep your virginity intact? In Halo 5 Guardians, the character Locke was originally supposed to have a heavy Boston accent. However, voice actor Ike Amati suggested that they change it to a more standard American accent because if this character is supposed to be the leader of Osiris' team, nobody can take leadership serious if they have a heavy Boston accent. You might have thought Halo Infinite was a PC or console exclusive, right? But did you know that Halo Infinite almost came to Stadia? And once they made the offer, Google actually decided to shut down the whole project. And that's the reason Stadia no longer exists. In the book Halo The Fall of Reach, during Master Chief's childhood, he used to suffer from sleep paralysis. And the book actually suggests that Master Chief's sleep paralysis as demon looked something like Captain Keys, but like super muscular. Now as a joke, I often refer to the didact from Halo 4 as Lord Voldemort, you know, from Harry Potter. But actually, if you look at this early concept art from Harry Potter, you can see that they almost look exactly the same. In Halo Combat Evolved, there's actually an Easter egg where at the right angle, you can see the ghosts of Spartan 2s that died on the battlefield on the first level near the cryopod where Master Chief initially wakes up from. And also after the events of Halo 3, the Arbiter traveled to Earth and actually shopped at a Macy's. We've talked about this one a little bit before, but did you know that not only is Halo 3 ODST an allegory for Inferno by Dante, but the nine circles of hell are actually represented one in each level, where the first level you start out in the first circle of hell and in Coastal Highway you end up in the ninth circle of hell. Yeah, look into that one a bit more. Okay, did you also know that actually I wrote Halo Reach and that's why I have a soft spot for it and that's why it's my favorite Halo. Ever wonder how Master Chief has been able to survive being a big old space virgin for multiple decades? Well, if you read deeper into the lore, it turns out that Master Chief's suit has some, well, extra functions to say the least. Hey, it's in the books. I'm serious. Now, what if I told you that the Ghost of Lockout is actually real? Now, if you don't know about the Ghost of Lockout, in 2006, a Halo player 
player uploaded a video to YouTube showing a ghost player that wasn't part of their lobby. And you might think, wow, that's a weird glitch. But I actually know this is this guy and he came back as a ghost. In Halo 3 ODST, if you make your way out of bounds on Teyari Plaza, you can actually find a series of switches that are hidden inside various building walls, which then give you access to a secret room where you can find an energy sword and a BR, both weapons that are unavailable in the regular ODST sandbox. Now you might know that Halo had a couple of cross promotions with other games, like there was the Warthog Enforcer or the Master Chief skin in Fortnite and Blood Gulch was also in Fortnite, there was a Fable crossover. So there was a couple of different crossovers over the years. But did you know that there is also a Master Chief skin in Rainbow Six Siege for the character Fuse? It was a short event a couple months ago and you were able to get this skin from a loot box. You can see it on your screen right now. You see the Master Chief helmet, the iconic, the super iconic Master Chief helmet. And it is here in Rainbow Six Siege, the greatest video game of all time. You may have noticed that between Halo 2 and Halo 3, the Brutes ended up looking quite a bit different. In Halo 2, the Brutes had this long hair appearance. However, in Halo 3, the Brutes are actually completely shaved from head to toe. As it turns out, this wasn't just a art style change or decision that was made lightly. It actually occurred due to technical limitations of the Xbox 360 not being able to render the real time hair and could cause some Xbox 360s to red ring of death. There's many fast food restaurants in the Halo world, but did you know that Sergeant Johnson's favorite Halo restaurant is actually actually Subway. During the formation of 343 Industries, back before they even had a name, the plan was originally going to be to call the company Gravemind Industries. However, they ended up choosing not to name themselves Gravemind Industries because they didn't want to name their company after a character that's known for betraying the Master Chief as they didn't want the precedent to be set that the company would betray their fans. So instead, they called themselves 343 Industries, named after the character 343 Guilty Spark. When MCC came out in 2014, IGN only gave it a 6 out of 10 because of its buggy, broken launch and unplayable state of the game. No matter if the game is bad or broken, we always have IGN to tell it like it is. On the last level of the Halo 3 campaign, Sergeant Jackson actually carries around a Spartan laser with unlimited ammo. So all the way back before Halo C was officially announced, it was supposed to be Marathon 4, but they decided to build a new engine to make Cortana look like a real woman and change the project. Did you know that during development of Halo Infinite, 343 actually worked on creating a brand new video game engine from scratch, specifically to speed up the development period for new content in a future Halo game. The Slipspace engine was completely built fresh and is responsible for the state that Halo Infinite is currently in to this day. Now we've all seen this fake Halo 4 leak picture, you know, with the giant dragon looking at Master Chief. And you might have thought it was fake and you might have thought it was a meme, but actually Actually, this was the vision for Halo 4. Frank O'Connor's original vision. Let that sink in. Halo 4 almost was a fantasy game and it would have been so much better than what we got. Now these original plans for this fantasy Halo were that Master Chief got transported back in time through a slip space portal just like at the end of Halo 4 and then woke up in like a fantasy world like a Lord of the Ring type. Shortly after awakening in that you know fantasy world Master Chief would have encountered a short man named Bilbo Swaggings and that short man would tell him about the quest he's on which would be to deliver this ring to this giant giant volcano. Now, obviously, Master Chief and the short man couldn't do it alone. So they had to get a couple more allies and, you know, soon they formed like a party. You know, there was this bearded dude with like a staff called like Dumbledore. And uh, eventually they made it to this volcano and then uh, Master Chief tossed in the ring and um, he was transported back to his time, back to the cryo sleep, you know, and that's how Halo 5 would have opened up. Just Chief waking up from, you know, his time travel trip and then you know those were the original plans for Halo 4 and Halo 5. Too bad they got scrapped. Halo 4 is actually the first video game in the Halo franchise that you can fly a pelican in. I don't want to contradict anything Elijah just said but actually at the end of Halo 3 in the last level there's a secret pelican you can find and you can do the whole water run in a pelican and beat the game this way. There's actually a secret bonus level found in Halo 2 where if you complete the last three levels of the campaign all under the part-time on legendary difficulty 
difficulty, and then find a secret door on the final level, you'll be transported back to Master Chief and be able to play through this alternate ending to the game. Now we already kind of mentioned the Halo Minecraft crossover earlier, but did you also know that there was Minecraft maps put into Halo 3 for a short April Fool's event back in 2017? Now this playlist has never returned and nobody has ever seen these maps anymore. They are considered lost media. During the promotional period for Halo 4, they actually made a limited run of Halo branded microwaves to help promote the new Halo game and get fans excited for the new game. We all know Infinite had a little bit of trouble during development, there were some delays and everything, but actually if you look at early footage of Halo Infinite from 2016, you can see that the game actually hasn't changed that much and it's been pretty much the same since 2016. Back in Halo Combat Evolved, there's this ledge right here on the level keys that typically you fall down to. However, you can actually instantly end this level if you grenade launch yourself just right at the right angle and land on the other side, which then triggers the end of this level. But the real interesting thing is after you complete that, when you load up on the next level, the Maw, the Warthog run will actually be completely different than the standard Warthog run that most players have experienced. This new Warthog run is just a little bit more challenging than the other version of it, but still not impossible. Infinite is supposed to last for 10 years, or at least 3 or 3 announced it will last for 10 years. Now, you could assume they mean like, you know, 365 days a year, but they never specified what calendar they're talking about. Now in a later interview with Bonnie Ross, she actually clarified that they're going after the body calendar, which has 19 months. So that means they actually mean 10 times 19 when they say 10 years, meaning 190 months, which is actually almost 16 years in our calendar. So remember, when you hear the Halo Infinite 10 year plan, it's actually the Halo Infinite 16 year plan. While in Halo Reach, most of the appearances where we actually get to see the MOAs up close, they're usually seen running on their feet, but canonically speaking, they actually can fly. Did you know that the name of the Halo Infinite Winter Contingency 2 event is actually a clever callback to the previous year's event called Winter Contingency? In 2014, the band Breaking Benjamin reunited from their hiatus so that they could work on remastering their music specifically for its inclusion in Halo 2 Anniversary, which also released in 2014 as a part of Halo the Master Chief Collection. If you've seen the hit movie from 2005, robots, you might remember the character Lug. During an interview for the movie, it was actually stated that the inspiration for making this character green came from the Master Chief. On Halo 3's final level, there's a secret easter egg that you can achieve by having one player launch another player with a gravity hammer to get over onto this platform, and then from there jump across to this other platform where you can find a hidden easter egg of Jason Jones. But the interesting thing is that this easter egg is actually social commentary on the state of the video game industry industry turning into a larger corporate based machine. So we all know the rookie from Halo 3 ODST, but did you also know that his real name is John Doe? Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. This right here is the character Captain Lowski. Now you guys know we always talk highly about Halo 4. I even have a Halo 4 picture hanging in my bathroom. But what I didn't realize until very recently is that Halo 4 was actually not universally liked by all the fans. In the Halo books, it's actually revealed that Master Chief is a big fan of Madonna. These stores on Tanner were actually an accident. This is what happens when you gamble on a fart. On the Halo 3 multiplayer level Longshore, you can actually find a secret easter egg of a dead elite body hidden randomly in the water. In one of the earlier books, it's actually revealed that Master Chief has a golden retriever named Chuck. Back in 2017, Nintendo actually approached Microsoft asking permission to use the character Master Chief for the series Super Smash Bros. However, Frank O'Connor denied access to the character and instead suggested himself as a replacement character to represent the franchise. Originally at the end of Halo 3, Master Chief was supposed to end up being in a coma. Microsoft even brought in the band Senses Fail to write a song specifically about Master Chief, though the song ended up being unused in the game. It kind of would have recreated that Breaking Benjamin moment from Halo 2. This sound file that we're about to play is not a part of official Halo canon. <laughs> Oh, my God.
Repeat, this is something that is not canon in the Halo universe. Totally not actually canon. In the Halo 3 ODST code, there are text strings suggesting that engineers would have been rideable with little saddles and harnesses. It is unknown why this was cut, but I heard that modders like Rejected Shotgun are working on restoring it. If you didn't know, Ninja Tyler Blevins actually was a Halo player before becoming famous for playing Fortnite. Matter of fact, he has a I Love Halo tattoo on the back of his neck. In one of the books, we learn the story of a pilot who was abandoned by humanity on the Ark, and we learn about the details of his 20 days where he was stranded on a small circular cliff island. It's this cliff right here. Some of you may remember Moist Critical's Halo 2 Lasso Deathless Challenge from about nine months ago, but one thing that's really interesting is that the winner of this contest, Gervalin, actually ended up raising $8 million through donations from fans to get to watch him play through the entire Halo trilogy Legendary Deathless as well, which he still hasn't done just yet. This mount over here is actually called Mount Silver, and is where you fight yourself from the previous titles once you beat the game. On the level of Kikawani Station, if you get close to the trains that are sunken under the water and listen very carefully, you can actually just faintly hear the sound of Guilty Spark humming the Halo theme, even though this character is nowhere near Kikawani during this time. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You're too much raining. <laughs> Did you know the original plans for Halo 2 Anniversary were actually to remake the game kind of from scratch and kind of change the role that Master Chief would have in the game? 303 knew that spin-off games around ODSTs are a huge hit, like Halo 3 ODST is often considered to be the greatest video game of all time. Now from that idea, they actually wanted to make Halo 2 mostly focused on ODSTs and rewrite the story, kinda. And the Master Chief would have kind of just been a character that you sometimes see, more like you know, in Halo 5, you know, he has a reduced role, he isn't the main character. Now, they actually never went through with this. They did make a couple cutscenes, though, that you can see right here on screen now, that follows Sergeant Stacker at the beach. And this is what the revisioned Halo 2 would have been like if 343 went through with this Halo 2 remake. In this early beta footage for Halo, you can actually see that Iron Man was once considered for official armor within the Halo franchise. However, this was right around the time where Disney acquired Marvel and this entire plan ended up falling through. If you've played Reach, you remember there was a couple characters, you know, the main characters that Reach revolves around, like George, Cat, Carter, Emily, and, you know, your own player. But did you know that Emily is actually born in a city called Luxor? And you might immediately think that is obviously named after the ancient Egyptian city Luxor, right? But actually, it is named after the hotel in Vegas, which is totally unrelated. You may wonder how the Spartans are able to fit into suits that are so tight. As it turns out, according to some of the Halo books, some Spartans, to avoid their skin getting irritated wearing their suit for so long, end up filling their entire suit with Jurgen's body lotion to prevent getting dry skin. So it is well known that Aliens was a big inspiration for Halo in the early days, and actually so was Star Wars. Like, a lot of stuff is, you know, inspired by these franchises, and, you know, some things look similar or feel similar. Like, in Alien, you had these big ships, or or also the ammo on the gun being displayed on a digital display. That's something they did in Alien, and that's kind of a staple of Halo 2. Not Halo 2, Halo 2, because Halo 2 didn't have the AR. And no, anyways, did you know that the Halo is also inspired by one more major franchise? And that is the 2013 film Elysium. As you can see, there's actually a Halo ring in this, and this is where they got the idea all the way back in 2001. Before the great piece of media that the Halo TV show was, there was another great piece of media with Forward Unto Dawn. Now, did you know that originally this was not supposed to be a Halo movie? The script is actually a leftover script for Fifty Shades of Grey 4 and got slightly reworked to fit the Halo style and then at the end they tagged on Master Chief, you know, appearing and fighting some elites and just being Master Chief. Okay, so I assume most people listening to this have played Halo 3 and might not know as much about the extended lore in the Halo universe. But you do remember at the end of Halo 3 you kill the character the 333 Guilty Spark, a character that had been in the previous two games as well. Now, what if I told you 
this character came back to life after being killed by Master Chief and now is roaming around helping the UNSC as like this iRobot Will Smith movie looking type of robot. You'd probably think I was lying. And you know, when I saw this picture for the first time, I thought it was a meme too. Now you might be wondering how did he survive being killed? Because obviously you shoot him with a Spartan laser at the end of Halo 3, right? And he explodes and then it's over. But here's what actually happened in the 303 headcanon. So basically the parts of Guilty Spark that survive have like some dude's soul in them. And then, um, you know, the soul is put into this robot and uh yeah i think that's it i don't even know if i'm joking anymore for the video i might have actually just explained what happened so what did you guys think of these facts please do let us know in the comments and maybe suggest some more for another follow-up video if you can think of any if you enjoyed this video please do make sure you're subscribed and notifications on make sure you're also keeping up to date with your gamer subs before you guys run out you know you could use code rocket slot to get a discount which is really cool and um if you haven't tried it definitely do go try that stuff it's amazing otherwise that's it for today we'll We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.